rock stars, Eric Andres, your guitar sage here. How the heck are you doing? I was gonna start off singing for you, but I realized it is, it's, it's early, uh, at least for my voice it is, and what I was trying to do. Um, so, with, without uh, further ado, I'm not gonna sing for you yet. I will sing for you during this program, and it's more going to be instructional, because friends, I am a guitar player uh, more than I am a singer, so. But today, we're doing part two, friends, of how to play guitar and sing at the same time. Yesterday, we talked about some of the mechanics. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the mechanics as well, because guess what? Whether you think you can sing or not, or whether you think you can play or not, or you think you can't put them the two together, it truly is all a matter of first, the psychology of it, and then the mechanics of it. But trust me when I say that if this is a, des a desire of yours to do this, it's an impossibility for you not to be able to do it if you do the right things, okay? So what that means is if you practice the right stuff in the right order, you won't get frustrated and you truly will have the ability to sing and play at the same time. Yes, you're born with the vocal cords that you're born with, you're born with the hands that you're born with, et cetera, et cetera, but you develop those things, right? So we mentioned just like a child who doesn't know how to speak, doesn't know how to use the potty, doesn't know how to walk in the beginning. Those are very, very simple tasks, but yet we have to learn them. We all have to learn them. So what makes us think that playing the guitar and or singing and or putting the two together at the same time would be any different, right? It's not any different. So with that, with that being said, you can do this. And I'm going to show you how we're going to break this down today. We're literally going to break a song down today and I'm gonna show you how I do this so one of the things that we mentioned here yesterday that I mentioned here yesterday is this PDF that I want you to download today because there's lots of psychology here we're, I'm gonna be talking about some of it today right but some of the psychology that we're going to be talking about today, if you don't have that down, you're not gonna understand why the mechanics work, which means you're not gonna know what to practice or why it is that you're practicing things, and you're not gonna be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. If you understand the psychology behind this, and then you understand the mechanics as I'm going to be teaching you and showing you why it is that we're doing things, because I don't know if you're anything like me, but if someone shows me why, and they can show me definitively, here's why. And it's not a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but it's science or some sort of something that I can see the dots being connected, then I'm gonna believe it, okay? Uh, and it's also going to make me practice because I know that it works, okay? If someone didn't show me, and if it wasn't scientifically proven that when you go to the gym and you push weights, that you tear the muscle down, and then what that does is it excites the body to build new muscle in place of the muscle that you just tore down, then I wouldn't go to the gym and work out. Who wants to push weights, right? I mean, sometimes if you're in the zone, it feels really invigorating, but trying to get to that place, sometimes it doesn't feel very invigorating. And you might think that you're wasting your time. So I don't want you to feel like you're wasting your time. That's why I explain the mechanics. So make sure that you download this PDF right now. The link is in the description of the video, Facebook or YouTube, Instagram, folks, you know where to go. Okay, um, you're gonna notice a little something different in here in that I do not have the $1 link anymore. We're doing away with that, it's going away. But we still have the free series. Okay, oops, I shouldn't have clicked on that. Now I'm in uh, f free course land. Um, oh yeah, I got back to it. Okay, usually that doesn't happen. Okay, so nonetheless, you've got that there. Another thing I really wanna point you out to, a couple matters of business while you are downloading this right now. Register for this free live webcast. It's this Saturday, friends. We're giving away over $6,000 worth of goodies, and I will literally be teaching you how to build a solid foundation in any genre of guitar. I don't care if you're looking to get into gent metal or you're looking to, to do blues or singer-songwriter. I don't care what it is. There are certain things that every single guitar player since the beginning of time has had to do in order to play guitar, right? There are some simple, bare, fundamental bits and pieces, but guess what? Here's the deal, people don't think those are important. Those are the most important things that you're gonna be using 99% of the time, and oftentimes they're the things that people skip over because they think, eh, this is basic, I don't need this, I'm much more mature than this, I need to go straight to jazz modes or something like that. And in the meanwhile, they don't have their basics down, and it's so obvious, because you see a player playing something that's complicated, but they're not, playing, they're not executing it well. 
okay? And so what that tells me is that, that they did not take the time with those basics. But a million times, uh, you know, a, a million times throughout uh, the day, you're going to have players who are real basic players, but they have those basic, basics down so well that you cannot tell whether they are a pro or just what they are, what level they're at. Because I see Nashville guys do this all day long. They're playing real basic stuff, and it just sounds so amazing. Then you see them rip, and they can rip and do all the advanced stuff too, but they got those basics down. And that's the difference between the pros and the amateurs is the pros have the, have the basics down. So that's what I'm going to be showing you on Saturday, okay? Whether you're a, a day one newbie or you're a seasoned veteran, I promise you, you're going to get a lot of stuff from Saturday's broadcast. Do not forget to sign up. Do that right here with that link. Um, it's free. Okay, it's free. We're giving away $6,000 worth of goodies, including this uh, beautiful American Fender Telecaster. Okay, once you download this PDF, I really want you to read it. It's new content. You've never seen it before, at least the majority of it, okay? I have the, the talent versus practice in here, I think. No, I don't. Um, this is all new content. But one of the things that we talked about, and we'll, we'll kind of graze over it today um, because we, we dug in deeper, or we went into it deeper yesterday. Today, we're going to be diving deeper into the actual bits here, and I'm going to show you how I break, break a song down, okay? So I'm going to mention this really quickly. Juggling unicyclists on a tightrope. We talked about this circus performer that's doing three different things at once. They're juggling. They're on a unicycle. They're walking on a tightrope. They didn't learn those things all together. They learned those things separately. Before they learned to walk on a tightrope, they had to learn to walk. Before that, they had to learn how to crawl. Before that, they had to learn how to flip over on their tummy. We all did these bits and pieces. It's just that we stopped at the walking. We didn't decide to walk across a tightrope and learn how to do that. But you had to learn all these basic skills, okay? Um, and so a juggler has to learn how to juggle separately. They're not going to be walking on a tightrope the day they're learning how to juggle. They're going to do it separately on solid ground. So we are going to take these same processes and use them to understand how to play guitar and sing at the same time. But Eric, I've tried it. I can't do it. Yeah, I know. That's because you tried it one time. doesn't work that way, right? Just like the juggling unicyclist on a tightrope doesn't just get up and have a gig. Hey, I'm going to do this. I don't see that position being filled at the circus. They don't just do that one day. You do that through lots and lots of practice, just like your favorite singers who are singing and playing guitar at the same time. If you somehow believe that because they were born into some musical family or have some sort of special skills that they were born with, um, that I'm here to tell you that's a complete farce and you're lying to yourself. It doesn't exist. It only exists through practice. I know this because I've met with thousands of players and the only ones that actually can do this are the ones that practice it and the ones that come in with all this natural talent and having the ability to uh, perfect pitch or whatever, have, maybe have a, a somewhat natural singing voice, but then they don't practice, they don't get beyond where they don't practice. It's just, it's just basic math, okay? Okay, so with that being said, uh, we need to learn how to know the chords of the song separately. We need to learn how to strum separately. We need to learn how to transition between our chords separately. And then we start bringing some things together, like maybe strumming and chord transitions. And then, so eventually we take all these little different assets and we start bringing them together to where, the, to where we actually are doing it all at once, okay? I know I'm going over this quickly because yesterday we talked about it more in detail. Today I'm going to be showing it to you in detail. Okay, for singing, if you don't know the lyrics to a song and you're tripping over them, you're going to be using your conscious brain to do that. We talked yesterday about conscious and subconscious. You do lots of things subconsciously. You drive the car, you ride the bike, you talk on the phone, you're doing all these things. You, maybe you're going through the supermarket, you're talking on the phone and you're grabbing produce or whatever, okay? It's because your subconscious knows to do this stuff, okay? If you didn't know what an apple looked like because you were two years old and someone hadn't identified that for you yet, then you wouldn't know to, yeah, it's an apple, I'm talking on the phone and I can grab all this stuff. You'd have to use your conscious brain to say, I gotta go, I gotta buy some groceries. And then you say, is this an apple? I don't know, it's red. Mm, pomegranates are red too. You're going into your conscious brain. You have to think about that stuff, okay? So same way, when we're singing and playing at the same time, we have to consciously drill stuff into us, just like we did as a child, walking, talking, going to the bathroom. We drilled that stuff in, or our parents did to us, so that now, wow, we're magical. We can talk and uh, walk and talk and poop. How cool is that? So similarly, we're going to be doing the same thing in regards to all this. It is no different, okay? If you think it's different, it's not. 
It's just that you don't know it yet. Once you do know it, the lights will start going on and you'll be a believer. I see this happen a few dozen times every single day inside the unstoppable guitar system. People say, I can't do this, I can't do this. Oh, wow, I'm doing this. Oh my gosh, now I'm really good at this. Eric, you are right, da, da, da. Every single time it's like this. I never see anybody who says anything different than that. Maybe maybe one person, I swear, in the whole program that's, that said, I, I can't do this. Well, they weren't practicing. That's bottom line. They just weren't practicing. Um, but 99.999% of all other people, they see it, okay? So I'm going to show you this today. Good news for you, okay? Uh, so, yeah, we can't be tripping over lyrics and those sorts of things because if we do, we're using our conscious brain. So we have to drive stuff into our subconscious through the conscious brain. You do this all the time. Whether you know it or not, You'll I'll remind you about this in other ways during the program. Um, so let's break this down. Let's dig straight into it and let's talk about how we might do this, okay? So <clears throat> a lot of these things that I'm showing you, the strumming, chord transitions, how to play these chords, all, all that stuff, I have in the free program for you that's at the top of that PDF, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Take advantage of that, my friends, okay? Uh, two other things before we go into this really quickly. Do not forget to sign up for the live broadcast and, uh, and share this. If you share this, we are literally giving away a $400 lifetime package to the unstoppable guitar system slash 365 today we do it all the time it's for someone who shares this on social media you know social media all right i don't need to teach you about all that you know it you're smart okay so let's get into this so we said um that we would do we were we were playing hallelujah right talk about just that part right there okay we need to not take such big steps to where we get frustrated there is a happy quan a happy middle ground that we need to be in where we're not bored and we're not frustrated most of the time we're pushing against this frustration part when it comes to guitar because we're trying to do too much because there's this automatic thing in us that assumes that we can take a whole five five dollar foot long and just in one bite eat it and it doesn't exist okay we cannot do that we know we can physically not do that with a sandwich but when it comes to intellectual type things we just think that we're the masters of the universe and because we have this great desire and ego that we can just do that it doesn't exist think of it like a sub sub sandwich and you're gonna have to eat it one bite at a time and that's what we're gonna be doing so you know we take a song like this and we say okay instead of like looking at I think this song has like 97 verses. It has a lot. Seriously, it must have like five or six verses. Um, and then there's the chorus, right? Uh, there's the melody. There's the lyrics. There's the phrasing. There's the guitar chords. There's the switching from guitar chord to guitar chord. There's the finger picking. There's a bunch of stuff going on at once. So what we need to do is we need to have the ability, okay, to individually, because everybody's on a different page, we need to each have the individual wherewithal to be able to break stuff down. Here's how I'm going to help you do this today is that since we're all in different places, if you are feeling frustration, it's because you're doing too much at once. And for 99% of us, this is what we're going to be doing. We're not going to be too bored. We're going to be doing too much and being frustrated. So with that being said, when you get to that point, because you're going to get to that point, trust me, it happens to me several times a day when I'm practicing. I'm always, we're always trying to practice more than what we're able to do, okay? That's good. We're pushing, but we need to be aware of that at the same time and back it off. Practice where we're at today and just practice more instead of faster, okay? So instead of taking this giant song, we're going to take a small section of the song, what I always call slow it down, break it down. So we're breaking it down. We're taking instead of seven verses, we're taking one verse. And instead of one verse, we're taking just the first part of the verse. And maybe instead of the first part of the verse, we're just strumming the chords and singing or something like that. I'll show you how we do this, okay? So I mentioned we had like six things going on, right? Changing chords, chords, finger picking, lyrics, melody, phrasing, okay? Bunch of stuff going on at once. We need to slow this down. We need to take some things out. We need to slow it down. We need to break it down. So we're going to slow it down by literally slowing the tempo down. We're going to break it down by just taking the first, first part of the first verse. And we're going to break it down further because we're not going to do any finger picking, okay? 
So what I would do in a case like this is I would go, let me take some of this, uh, take some of this fun stuff out here. So if I go, I heard there was a secret chord. Okay, now notice what I just did there. Is I only strummed two chords, I'm not doing any finger picking, and I'm just taking a very small portion of the song. Friends, that is it in a nutshell. You could literally stop the video right now, and if you truly understand what I just said, you're off to the races, and you just take that and do that to everything that seems overwhelming in life. Everything, not just music. Okay, working out, diets, whatever. You break it down to a small portion that you can do, that is doable, and then as you grow muscles in that particular thing, you keep going, okay? So, I heard there was a secret chord, and that's it, the first phrase. You might even go, I heard there was, I heard there was, because you're not strumming, you're not going from one chord to another, you're just one, one whole note, right? I heard there was. Good. You're off to the races. You've got that part down. Let's add another part. I heard there was a secret chord. But Eric, I can't play the C minor and the A minor while I sing. Okay. Let's break it down further. Just play the C to the A minor. You can sing it in your head. And then try it. Just go. I heard there was a secret chord. I heard there was a secret chord. See what we're doing? We're separating just the guitar, just the vocals. Then when we start growing our muscles there in that area, we go, we do them together. I heard there was a secret chord. And then once we get that, we add another part. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. I heard there was a secret chord where David played and it pleased the Lord. And you repeat that, you loop it until it feels like, hey, I got this. Then you add another part. So what I do is I like to take the second part and I like to do it separately and then glue the two together. So. Um, I heard there was a secret chord that David played that pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? But you don't really care for music, do you? Okay, and then I'll put those, I'll glue those two together. So, I heard there was a secret chord where David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? I heard there was, and I would repeat that over and over again until it felt good. And then I keep on tacking on another piece, okay? Friends, this is how the pros do it. Keith Urban, John Mayer, I don't care who it is. No one gets a free ride, no one gets to skip a step. So what makes us think that we should have the right to do that when Keith Urban, John Mayer, uh, Adele, or whoever is out there busting their ass to do this stuff? What makes us think that we can just skip a step? We can't, we've gotta do the same, we've gotta go through the same gauntlet. And guess what, it's fun if you do it at a pace that's fun, okay? To where you're constantly going, hey, I'm growing, I'm getting better, hey, this is sounding better but you're not so frustrated that you're like, I am not good at this, I'm not cut out for this. Don't ever believe that, it's a crock of crap. Okay, it's an excuse. Don't lie to yourself, you can do it, trust me. All right, so that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna break that down until you have a verse. Okay, and then you're gonna move on to the second verse. The second verse is gonna be easier than the first because you just did all this. You're just using some different lyrics. Third verse is gonna be even quicker. Once you, once you get the chorus down, your choruses are pretty much always the same, right? So you are start understanding this stuff starts to accumulate and get easier. Then the next time you try this, you're not gonna to have to spend as much time. So if the first song takes you a week to learn, the second song is not gonna take you a week to learn. The second song, the second song is gonna take you two days to learn. The next song is gonna take you a day to learn. The next song is gonna take you an hour to learn. That's literally how it works. It's just that you start developing these skills. That's why when people see people like John Mayer or Keith Urban or whatever, and they're able to do something right away, they go, Eric, it's a big fat liar. He, he lied, he told me that it's all about practice, but here, look at this guy, he's just doing it. What you're missing is all the time that that person busted their ass doing this stuff 
in their woodshed, just sitting there working this stuff out, and now they are to that level, right? So taking an expert at anything, uh, I don't care what it is, and give them something in, in, that's associated to what it is that they do so well, they're going to be able to do it right away because they've built up those skills, okay? But start at day one where they did, where you started day one, everybody starts at day one at whatever it is that they're doing, and give them the same task, they're going to be as good as or bad as you were the first day. So number one, don't beat yourself up. Give yourself grace. Understand that one is always before two. It's never after two. So why should you expect it to be after two? It's always before one. Do step one. Be patient. Be dedicated to doing step one. Step two will follow. And when you've earned step one, step two will present itself. And then you move on like that. It's just life, okay? But if you apply this to guitar, this stuff will start coming out in your, re in your everyday life too. You literally will be doing everything like this. I think of every single thing like this. Okay, and I could be better at it. So let's um, let's let's get to some questions because I think I've sufficiently told you what it is that we should be doing here. And um, but I want to make sure that I'm getting to some specific questions that you guys have so that we can guarantee that you guys are not stuck. Now, if you want to ask other questions that aren't related to singing and playing guitar at the same time, that's fine too. I don't mind answering those for you. Um, but if you can keep them to this subject, that'd be great, but it doesn't have to be. I'm going to start questions on Facebook, and then I'll head over to YouTube. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do it the other way around today because I've been giving Facebook a lot of love lately. I'm going to start with uh, YouTube. And um, <laughs> hi from Colorado. What's up, Mick? Um, Germany, we got a lot of, lot of folks in here. France, uh, beautiful. I love to see that. Texas, Virginia. Fantastic. Jacksonville, my, my home state, Florida. Uh, yeah, New Mexico. Love it. Montreal. I love it. Isn't that cool? We're all from around the world. We're here in the same room. Love it. Spain. So cool. All right. So, um, so let's get into it. I'm going to be starting on Facebook. Please leave a question mark, okay, after those questions because it's too difficult for me to keep up with these and to read every single comment. You guys understand that, right? Okay. What's the passing note Eric was playing, guys? It's a B, so B, B. So I'm going from a C to an A minor, and that's a B note. Are you talking about, that's a E, F, G, okay, great. I always learn the chords first until it's second nature. This is David on YouTube saying, I always learn the chords first until it's second nature. And I try to sing over my playing. Is this wrong? Is this a wrong method to use? Absolutely not, David. You've got, you've got it exactly. Now, everybody might have a different method. Work with it and see what works best for you. It's kind of hard to say that, you, that one has a method if they haven't tried the other things. Otherwise, it's just a habit. You know what I'm saying? But if you have a method that works best for you, then do that. Uh, but the way you're doing it, David, that's what I do too. I learn the chords, I make sure I've got the basic chord progression down, and I sing over the top of it, and that's how I start. Okay? And learn that chord sequence first. Yes, William, do that. Learning to Fly by Tom Petty has an A minor to G, and I can do that, and I can do that chord switch. Any ideas? Uh, you're saying you can or cannot. Right here, you said you can do it. So, any ideas? I'm saying, uh, great, you're doing great. That's my idea. If you can do it, if you can't do it, Art Collective Coda, then what you want to do is you want to stop singing the song and you want to make sure that you get that A minor to G down before you do anything else. Because here's where the observation comes in. And if you learn to observe like this, okay, the world's your oyster. If you say to you, you just identified this, I'm having a problem going from A to G. I can't do that switch. I think you're saying I can't do that switch. Well, then you need to be able to do that switch before you can perform the song, right? Adding singing and playing and pointing at the crowd and keeping away from the pyrotechnics and, uh, and throwing your pick to the crowd and talking to the press and stuff like that. That's only going to confuse matter, right? So you got to get that A to G, A minor to G down. So do that. Come back, okay? Do that. Taking singing lessons and playing guitar, uh, is it... Is it doable? Well, of course, yes, it is doable. 
Been playing for six months. Alleluia is one of the first songs I started finger picking, and now I realize I use the wrong fingers to pick root note strings. Should I trouble to correct it now? Absolutely, you should, yes. Finger picking is one of the easiest things to do if you've been taught correctly. Now, if you've learned some bad habits, you're gonna have to undo them. It's not so hard to undo them if you stop today doing the bad habit and you only do the good habit. And the way to do that is to just do it very slowly. Uh, finger picking is in the free course, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. The link for that's in the top of the PDF, okay? Okay, okay, art collective, you cannot do it. Okay, that's what I assumed. Yeah, just do it. Just practice that A minor to G. Here's literally what you have to do. Chances are it's not your right hand or your strumming hand, it's your left hand. So this is what you do. This is literally the, you ever heard the chink in the armor, right? Or, um, you know, like the old folklore says that uh, in every dragon there was a scale that was very weak. There was a scale that was more weak than the others. And if the knight could find that scale and slay the dragon, then the fortune was theirs, right? So um, it's also known as the chink in the armor, okay? Because a knight is also going to have a place where it's been hit, where it's been weakened, a chink or something like that. Um, and um, with that being said, um, you're going to have, uh, you're going, now, hold on, now I've, I've, I've totally lost my place. Why, why was I saying that? Um, oh, the chink in your armor is that A minor to G. That's, that's what I was going to say. So specifically, it doesn't have anything to do with strumming. It has to do with, you probably can't get from the, the hand position. So this literally is the chink in your armor. This is how you're going to practice to fix it, right? Literally, this is what you're going to do. Your A minor chord, your G chord. And this is all you're going to do, Art is you're gonna go, you're at your G chord, you're gonna think A minor, A minor, A minor, where do my fingers go, where do my fingers go? They go right here. Okay, G chord, G chord's next, right? G chord, second finger goes there, first finger goes there, third goes there, fourth goes there, okay, you're doing the inventory in your head, and then you assemble the chord. Okay, I talk about this inside the free course if you want more information about that. Uh, yourguitarstage.com slash 30, or it's in the link that's in your PDF. So you're going back and forth between those two. Once you do that a few dozen times, you're going to have your A minor to G. You are building what's called a neural path. Literally, you're teaching your brain how to learn. Okay. Uh, when is the right moment to start all this? Of course, right now. I mean, literally, anytime you want to start. Whenever you want to start getting good is, this, is the time to do this. So, so start it now. That's not uh, some lame pat answer. It just literally, like, tell me some reason why you think you can't start now, and, I'll, and I promise you I'll figure out 99% of the time you, you're going to want to start now. Sorry if this was answered yesterday. I had to drop for work. Are in-person singing lessons from a teacher coach, coach worthwhile for, for a mediocre singer? JR, it depends who the coach is. Uh, singing lessons are typically very expensive, just like guitar lessons, but sometimes singing lessons are even more so. I would suggest uh, something online because it's so much more affordable. Online lessons are so much more affordable. Uh, if you can get a great singer coach, then that's great, but do you even know what that looks like? So most people don't know what that looks like, what, what we should be asking for, okay? I um, actually spoke with him this morning. I mentioned this guy yesterday, Brett Manning, uh, singing success. He's an, ins an insane, amazing teacher. Uh, he's taught Keith Urban and a bazillion people here in Nashville. He's like top at the top, and he's a great instructor. I've taking his online courses. We were talking this morning, actually talking about um, doing something for you guys. So eventually we will end up doing that. But check him out, Brett Manning, B-R-E-T-T-M-A-N-N-I-G. -E -T -T and his course is called Singing Success. I don't get anything for, for, for uh, plugging that. It's just a good product. So check him out. Uh, anything online uh, is going to save you a ton of money, okay? Let the guitar chord changes lead your singing the lyrics or vice versa. Um, Rod, one is not really leading the other. They're in tandem, okay? So they're in tandem. So, so you know, you play the chords and you sing the, the lyric over the chord as, it, as you hear it. Eric, do you do one-on-one -on -one lessons via video chat. The plane ride is a bit long for me. Jasco Plumbing, I do, but it's very expensive. It's 150 an hour. So 
Jasko, what I would suggest you doing is getting in the free program and understanding how it is that I teach. Because you can always skip videos. I don't suggest it because 99% of the time you got somebody who's been playing a long time, this happens all the time, and they say, Eric, I can't believe that I didn't know this. Like, I'm a teacher myself and I did not know that. Or I've been playing for 30, 40 years, I didn't know that. It happens all the time inside the program. So don't skip it. Um, but you can always watch the video and watch it at double speed or whatever. Start at the free course, Jasko, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. Or if you really do want to take one-on-one -on -one lessons from me, you can. But I'm telling you that I'm telling you that I'm telling you for a few dollars more, you can have the whole course, a lifetime membership to the whole course. So why? Um, I understand people want to do lessons one-on-one, -on -one and I'll do that kindly. Uh, but... I have to charge that price, otherwise I got a billion people wanting to do one-on-one -on -one lessons and I can't talk to 200 people at once like this. But if you really want to do it, I definitely do it, yeah. Eric, uh, one Eric to another, I love playing, but it's a pain. Uh-oh, I missed this, hold on. Oh, it went away. Boy, I hate when that happens. Literally, uh, probably the main reason why I don't put the practice in I need. Any exercises suggested that you could get me through the pain? Okay, Psycho Mistro, I'm going to be I'm gonna be salty here for a minute. What do you mean pain? Do you mean pain like a bungee stick under your fingernails? Do you mean pain like, uh, like uh, going through uh, chemotherapy? Is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about pain on your fingertips or muscle, muscle fatigue in your hand? Okay, because if that's what you're talking about, I I don't feel sorry for you. All right, this is like the stuff we go through. I don't mean to. I'm not. I'm not making fun of you. I'm. I'm calling you up to who you are, which is not a wimp, and it's somebody who's who's like, I want to be good at guitar. Screw my fingers hurting. The fingertips hurting. They're gonna hurt, right? If you want anything in life and you want to be good at it, you better buck up and you better say, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna be um, a wuss. I'm gonna step up. Okay. The exercises is, is to literally start doing it, okay? And so I'm sorry, I might have just lost another student there. I don't mean to, uh, but anything else would be a lie to tell you that, okay? So, so yeah, the, I do have plenty of exercises inside the free course, but you have to just do it. And there's no amount of pain that you're feeling. Um, and I, I, get, I get people saying this all the time to me, and I send them a link to a guy with no arms playing guitar. And I say, if you've got it worse than this guy then yes, you have all the excuses in the world not to be playing guitar. Otherwise, usually they respond back with a big sheepish, sheepish, sheepish smiley face uh, icon uh, because you understand that to play guitar without any arms, to be playing with your toes is pretty cool. And it, it gives you a, a bookmark to go, okay, I guess I don't have it so bad. So that's my, and I know, look, I know a lot of you out there have pain in your fingertips. So did I. So did every guitar player since the beginning of time. You're not special. Um, I know the world tells us that we're all so special, and we are. We're all special. But if we're all special, then we're also all the same, aren't we? So it's really truly a matter of just saying, do you really want to do this or do you not? And that's that's where it's at. You may not want to. Some people are like, no, my fingertip pain is uh, is too much and I can't handle it. And, and they are going to walk away. And that's up to them. But they're also not going to have the benefit of being a great guitar player. So I've got plenty of exercise for you in that free course, and I love you, Psycho Maestro. I'm not picking on you. I truly mean that with the most love. Uh, I'm calling you up, okay? Just practice. Then try to do Alison Krauss, Let Me Touch You for a while, but the picking part gets stuck while I'm singing. Any different method of practicing that? Nope, there's not, Brian. No other uh, technique, there's no method other than breaking stuff down. And with that being said, Brian, I don't know what videos you've watched of mine. So you could be doing it entirely different, you know, you could be doing it wrong. So I don't know specifically what you mean different method. But practice is practice. And so you practice the thing that you're having a, an issue with. But you may need to dig through the video some because I'm going to need more information. Does that make sense? Uh, Lauren is saying, is there a more musical way to learn all five positions of the pentatonic scale? Lauren, learn them, rote method, you know, you, so you learn them. You learn them like that, right? And then what I suggest is getting straight into improvisation. Check out um, Minimalistic Blues on YouTube. 
just search that, search your guitar stage, minimalistic blues or blues, and you'll, you'll find that. Uh, lots of videos for this inside of the unstoppable guitar system, okay? Because you need to learn how to phrase, just like a child, if you hand them a dictionary, they're really not gonna be able to do, they may be able to read it all and be able to say everything phonetically, but they're not gonna be able to say, Daddy, I need to go to the bathroom, because they never learned the phrase. That's why a child at five years old will know tens of thousands of words and phrases and everything else, and yet they may have never opened up a book, a much more uh, powerful way of teaching, right? This is how I teach guitar. It's like, yeah, we could just sit there and read music all day, or I could say, here's the lick that Jimi Hendrix played, and now you're playing what Jimi Hendrix played without having to do all that other stuff. You could learn that other stuff, but wouldn't it be great to get to playing Hendrix right away? Uh, so that's what you want to do, okay? You want to get to improvisation as soon as possible. William's saying, watching people like Clapton play and sing blues helps rhythm while singing and leads on breaks in singing really helps. Any advice on that approach? William, you'd have to get more specific because I don't know what you mean by that. Um, you know, the only thing I could say from just the information that you gave me there is any information on singing during breaks is, is to literally do that. Just be like, is to play your chord, tap your foot and have the time that you have to say your phrase in there and say it. Uh, what I would suggest, you know, any advice on that is to do lots of repetition like I've done here today. Pedro is saying, hi from Puerto Rico. Is there a trick to memorizing diminished as well as augmented chords on the guitar? Uh, thank you very much for your time, Pedro is saying. Pedro, you know, when you're practicing stuff rote, you know, over and over and over again, you're going to memorize things. But, you know, in regards to diminished, uh, there's some patterns with diminished, and it's every three frets. So if you were to play, if you started at the G here, and you wanted to play a diminished scale, you got it. This, you go up three frets, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and you just got the whole guitar there that's all diminished, you could do the same. Or your diminished chords, every three frets will all be in the same key. So yeah, there's some there's some little tricks that you can learn, especially as far as diminished, okay? Okay. Is it good to associate words with chord changes? Yes, it is if you're if you're trying to sing and play at the same time, indeed. When I sing the dog howls, how do I find my best key for singing? Richard. Richard, take a specific song and play through it doesn't matter whether you can do it in time or not. Just find the lowest note, find the highest note. If you can sing within that range and it's comfortable, then you've got a good key for that particular song. It's not going to work for every song. The key is not going to work for every song. It's dependent on the vocal range of that specific song, right? So you could have a song that's in G and it's in your range, and then the next song's in G and it's totally out of your range because of how that person composed the song. It's all. Uh, did they choose to hit a higher note or not? That's all it is. And so you want to make sure it's in your range. If it's not, you're going to use the capo key method that I talk about in the free program, and you're going to move that capo around to find out what key is going to suit you best. Okay? I always have trouble with playing the F chord. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, David. Go over the basic fretting bits that everybody does not do in the beginning. Go over that. I go over them specifically in order inside the free program. Watch those fretting videos, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. The link's in the PDF, okay? Do that. And then, David, after you do that, okay, you've got to get, again, the chink in the armor, right? It always comes down to the basics. Most people don't have the basics down. you got to have those basics down. If you don't have those down and you're trying to skip a step and go straight to an F chord, okay, then it's kind of like learning division and you haven't learned addition yet, okay? Now, you may know those basics, but it's just the F chords you're having an issue with, but we need to find out how, why it is that, that F chords having a pro, you're having a problem with that. And the way to do that is to watch, okay? It was just one thing you could do. Watch that series, okay, inside, inside the free course, but then after that, go to YouTube 
and I have this this video in the course as well, but search effing F chord, E-F-F-I-N-G, effing F chord. Um, because everybody's like, this effing F chord, right? Well, that's how to, this is how to fix it. I'm gonna show you how to fix it by breaking it down, just like we're doing with this music here, is break it down, slow it down. Uh, because anything in the universe, from a galaxy, a solar system, to an atom, can be broken down to its assets. And when we start breaking things down, we can start going, oh, well, this is why this works. But if we don't, it's very mysterious, right? So um, that's what to do. And you can do that with anything. <laughs> Richard, listen to the dog, yeah. Okay, good, 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 good stuff here. Um, how much good do you have to get in remembering the fretboard? You need to get good at it, and it's a very easy thing to do. I cover it in the free course. Get good at it, okay? Okay, springboards, someone's asking, springboards. Ashwin, uh, uh, Ashwin, yes, so you know what springboards are. You know that I teach them. Uh, I have videos for this. Now look, friends, if I have a video for it where I spend 15 minutes talking about it, I obviously won't spend 15 minutes talking about it today. Not to be rude, but I really wanna to get to everybody's questions. And I've got that for you, Ashwin. So on YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage Springboards, and I'll get you set up with that, okay? Okay, sweet. All right, I'm bumping over really quickly to Facebook. I wanna to get to some questions there. I don't wanna leave those folks high and dry. All right, all right, we got Ireland, we got Texas in the house, nice. Ty, what up? Dalton, what up? Roy's in the house. Joey's in the house. Khan's in the house. Okay, here we go. Here's a question. Been following you for a few months and done the free course. Last night, I got through playing of Neil Young's Heart of Gold for the first time. Just got to work on singing. And you recommend any other easy songs? John, on YouTube, here's how to... I get this question all the time, but... I may say an artist that you hate, so here's the deal. Go to YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage, and the name of an artist that you love, Elvis, Clash, Doors, whoever, and chances are I've got at least a song by them, okay, probably several songs, do that. Most all the songs that I teach are either going to be easy, because I'm gonna show them in an easy way, or you'll get them in time because I break them down so far that you'll be able to get it. Okay, so so that word easy is obviously different to everybody, but then also everything's easy if you break it down. Okay, Every, literally everything is easy. I'm no different a guitar player than you are. Literally no different. Um, there's some guitar players who hear my voice right now who are better than me, okay? means because they practice more and they've dug down deeper, okay? Probably while I was teaching, they were digging and, and, and making themselves a better player. So, um, and there's players out there who aren't as good and that's all subjective, obviously, but, um, and it all comes down to practice. Uh, you are as good as you practice, bottom line. That's all it has to do with, 100%. Is it has to do with your practice. If you're practicing, it's the weird thing, and I've noticed this about Weightlifters, track with me here for a minute. This is new science too, by the way. Um, so one, um, if you can tell already, I'm very sarcastic in what I'm gonna say here. Uh, my wife knows when it's coming. Uh, these guys that go to the gym every day and they're working out and they're eating the right food and stuff and then you got these people who aren't going to the gym much and they're, they're pounding hamburgers and, and fries and stuff. The, Freaky thing is, these guys that are going to the gym every day, they're getting swole, right? They're getting big. It's the weirdest thing. And these guys that aren't going to the gym, they're not getting any bigger, and they're so frustrated. Hmm. And the same thing with guitar players. The guys that are practicing all the time, they're getting better. And the guys that aren't, they're not getting better. I wonder 
if there's a correlation, do you think? I say this so sarcastically, but the thing is, is that you and me and all of us here do this all day long. We go, I don't understand why I'm not getting better. Because you're not practicing specifically what it is you should be practicing enough, okay? There, I said it terrible oh, in this terrible world that we live in where everybody has to be stroked all the time. I'm just going to be honest with you and say, hey, you didn't practice enough on that specific thing. Bottom line, my daughter had a terrible gig a few months ago and she goes, dad, I just I'm so embarrassed and it was terrible and I'm, you know, and I just don't know. And I'm like, well, what did you learn from it? She's like, I don't know. I mean, you know, I guess I need to practice more. I'm like, you guess. It's like, that's what it's about. You just need to practice more. If you want to go on stage and be great, you got to practice to where you can do it in your sleep. And then you'll step on stage and you'll impress people. Okay. An amazing show by an artist or an apology. Which one do you want? An amazing show, right? An apology all day long is not going to take place of an amazing show. If you spend $300 for an ELO ticket and Jeff Lynn gets on stage and he sucks and he says, at the end, I'm sorry, you're going to be like, that's fine. That's 300 bucks. No, you're going to be like, get on that daggone stage and do it right. And that's what people want to see when they see you play. So honor them. Honor your audience and kick ass, okay? I get all the notes... Uh, and I need to take that advice myself. I really do. Uh, as, as a teacher, I'm constantly teaching. I'm not playing enough. I really am desperately trying to get more playing in because I want to be a better player. Uh, I don't know of any musician who's where they want to be as a player. Okay, I can get to the notes, no problem, but I take three to four seconds. Is it like immediately? Okay, Suraj. So he says a great thing here, okay? He can get to the notes, no problem, but it takes three to four seconds, okay? Wherever you're at is where you're at. If you're four years old, you cannot be five until your fifth birthday. So that is just life. So wherever you're at is where you're at. As a guitar player, if you can't play the F chord, it's not that you can't play the F chord, it's that you may not be able to play the F chord the way you want to play it today. And the better, the more you start using language like that, the more you start tapping into your own psychology and understanding that, yes, of course I could play an F chord. i just not super good at it today. I can eke out some of the notes, but today it's not as clean as I'd like it to be. Now, if you can understand that psychology, you're on your way towards playing the F chord really, really well. But you got to stop saying, I can't do it, right? So accuracy is more important than speed because speed is a byproduct of accuracy. It's never going to happen first. And if you're chasing speed, you're only going to frustrate yourself. Chase accuracy because you can do it immediately. You, okay. And then what will happen is because you're doing something accurately so many times, you get fast at it. It's just a byproduct of it, but stop focusing on speed. Okay, good. Great questions. Eric, I use alcohol on my fingertips like Clapton, but is there an easy way to toughen the side of your index finger for bar chords? Mike, I don't know anything about using alcohol on my on, on fingertips. I've heard people say that before. I should probably do a little research on that. Uh, I've just never done that before. To me, I always say, you know, for me, I'd be like, I'm putting alcohol on my fingertips. I could be playing right now. That's my mentality, and so I'm always playing. Anytime I have a, pra a time to practice, I practice. So to me, if I want to toughen the side of my finger, I'm going to use the side of my finger to play the bar chords. There's nothing better than getting straight to what it is that you're trying to do. Dancing around it is dancing around it. So, Mike, I know I sound like a jerk sometimes, guys, and I'm sorry for that. Maybe it's because I'm a jerk. No, really, I'm trying to cut to the chase and get straight to your problem so we can fix it, right? Because... Um, I could pet you or I could give you the right answer and get you to the next level. And that's really what I'm trying to do, okay? So, Mike, I would suggest toughening the side of your finger by playing bar chords, playing bar chords, playing bar chords, you know? But I get it, too. We're trying to hack. We're trying to get there quicker. I'm a big hacker. I love shortcuts, you know, if, if they're really good shortcuts that work. So, indeed, practice and practice, Ashwin said. He's in my head. Uh, Lauren said, there are genetic freaks, and now I'm going to address that because is there, a difference, is there a difference in people's DNA that might give them a benefit to something? 
I'm going to say it's such a small margin of how much better they can be at a particular something that I'm almost going to say, no, it doesn't count. Because what happens is there's about 95% folklore built around maybe 5% of truth. Let me say it again. If someone has a 5% advantage on you, people build up to about 95% folklore. Oh, well, you know, Robert Johnson sold his soul to the devil. That's why he played like he did. Well, number one, Robert Johnson didn't play very good compared to some of the players that are out today. Okay, yeah, he played rootsy and he had some great soul and stuff like that. But I mean, compared to some 10 year olds I see playing today, he was hardly someone who sold his soul to the devil. Okay, with that being said, there's all this folklore around stuff like that. Get it out of your head. Number one, doesn't exist. Number two, it's defeating you. Okay, so stop thinking that someone has some advantage on you. They don't. The only advantage that they have is they may have more drive than you, and 100%, that definitely is something that's going to make them more successful at whatever it is that they do. But guess what? You can, you can increase your drive, just like you can diminish your drive. Uh, get around happy people. Uh, do things that inspire you. Get good sleep. Eat the right food. Work out. There's 10 million things I could tell you, but uh, that is the stuff that you need to do to, to get your you know, your momentum going. Fingers hurt. Uh, get a can of finger ease. It does work. Rod, really, does it? Hmm. I didn't know what finger ease is. I've, I've always thought it was to make the fretboard faster. Never used it. And that's only because I just haven't used it. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It may work. Rod's saying it works. I believe Rod. So you're saying if I eat more burgers, I will get better at guitar? I'm saying the opposite, Jeff, if you eat more burgers. Uh, yeah, I'm saying the very opposite. And trust me, I've eaten some burgers in my time. Eric, how do you fit your singing in songs like What You Got by Sublime? That is when there's finger picking or string picking. Okay, climber, great question. Same thing, same method. Is it something like this? Right? Something like that. So here's what I would do, Climber, is I would learn the chords first. Okay, we'll break it down just like just like I did in that PDF, right? Let's uh, let's do this for a second. Watch this. So what do we got? We got chords of the songs. We got D. I don't know if this riff is right, by the way. I'm just something like that, right? So we got the chords. We've got to get the chords down. If you can't get the chords down, you're not ready to move on to step two. Get the strumming or picking pattern down. Here we go. You're going to literally work on that. If it's too fast for you, you're going to slow it down. Right? The chord transitions. We've done that already. We're going back and forth between these two chords. If you haven't done it, you need to do it. And then you're going to work on the finger picking and the, the transitions at the same time. Right? Then I would say as far as the singing skills, what you're going to do is you're going to be able to sing the song to Sublime. You're going to be able to sing it to the MP3. Da -da 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 and you're like, okay, I'm singing this fine. Now you've got some skills, right? You know the lyrics, you're not tripping over them or anything. Now you're ready to bring the melody and the lyrics to what you're playing. And the way to do that is to do it nice and slow. But what I, the way I would do it at first is I would go, let's see. Ba da 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 da. Ba da 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 da. Okay, now what did I do here? I broke it down. I stopped finger picking. I just strummed, which is going to relieve some of the CPU idge that I'm using up here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of help the help the brain a little bit by not giving it as much so it gets overwhelmed. So I'm gonna 
relieve it a little bit by just strumming. And then I'm not worried about the lyrics yet. Also, I don't know them. Okay, I'm able to do that. Then what I would do is I would look up the lyrics and I would sit there and read them while I'm, while I'm playing or something like that. Uh, and then I would slowly start bringing in the finger picking part. And the way I would do that is this. I would do it real slow. Da, 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 da. And I would just do the first line. Ba, da, 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 da. Maybe I'd stop. Okay, that was right. Ba, da, 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 da. Cool. Now, if I don't have it right, I'm going to slow it down even more, and I'm going to practice it until I find out what note it is that I'm messing up or notes that I'm messing up, and I'd fix it before moving on. Think about that juggler. If you can't juggle three balls, go down to two. Adding more is not going to help. So I'm going to go da 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 da. Cool, got that. Now I'm going to loop it. Ba da 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 da. Da 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 da. Ba da 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 da. Ba da 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 da. And I'm going to do that till it feels good, till it feels comfortable, till I'm in the zone, to where I, every single time I do it, it sounds great. Then I'm going to add another part. Ba da 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 da. Ba da 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 da. Ba 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 da 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 da. Right now we got now we're now we're going someplace. Okay, so that's how you want to do that. You want to break that down to that sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. I have an acoustic guitar with heavy strings. I struggle with bar chords. They just don't ring out. You don't ring them out. <laughs> what do you do with your index finger to make it work? David, watch, again, watch the fretting technique that I have in the free course, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. You got to be playing on your fingertip. You've got to be playing right behind the fret. You have to be applying the right amount of pressure. There's a few things that you got to know, and if, you do, if you're not doing those things, you can watch a million YouTube videos on how to play bar chords. You're still not going to get it because the essentials, you got to get those essentials down. Absolutely crucial, David. After that, watch the effing F chord because that's going to help you with understanding what it is that's keeping you back from playing that chord. Chances are it's like one or two notes, not the whole enchilada like you think about. Have you ever done this where you're in a fight with a loved one or a friend or a family member or whatever and, um, you know, this might be too much information, but you go, Dad gone, it's always like this. I had a girlfriend like that where, where like every single time we get in a fight, I'm like, Dad gone, it's always like this. Well, it kind of was, but it wasn't always like that, right? But when you're in that zone, you say, hey, it's always like this and you're, and you're very fatalistic, right? You can work out of this psychology. I've done it. Um, and you can do this with anything. So with guitar, if the last chord doesn't sound good and the rest of the song sounds great and you end the song badly and it's embarrassing, you're like, God, I suck at that song. No, you don't. You just need to get the last chord. So important to take inventory of your life, to take inventory of your songs, to take inventory of what it is that you're having a problem with because chances are it's a much smaller problem than you think it is. And you just address that one thing, iron it out, you're done, right? It's like if you if you have a shirt that's got a big wrinkle in it, yeah, the whole shirt's going to look goofy, right? But if it just has one wrinkle, you just got to work on that one wrinkle, not the whole bag on shirt. So getting that mentality um, that that's what you need to do. So David, it's probably that you're really close to playing these bar chords. You just need a little extra bump. Uh, I would watch, uh, you know, I would watch that effing F chord video on YouTube. Anyone play bass? I do. I love it. How do you choose a finger picking pattern for a song? Great question. Well, it really it really depends. First off, if there is a finger picking pattern, just do that. Otherwise, you almost always want to start the the finger picking roll, whatever you do, you always want to start with the bass note, bum, because you're introducing the, the the chord with that note. That's how our ears work. So See, those are that's a C chord and an A minor chord, and I'm playing that bass note first. C, A minor. Makes sense? So that's usually how you'll do it, but I could go... That 
could pick different patterns. Uh, So really, it's up to you. You're an artist, so pick whatever sounds good to you, okay? There is no right, okay? That's like looking at a painting and saying, well, this person painted this wrong. Really? Really? Painting? Okay. I see people do this all the time on Facebook. You know, no, you're wrong. Really? It's an opinion. It's an opinion. An opinion is an opinion. And all out of the gate, you're saying this is what I think, right? So, like, it's okay to be subjective. Do that. Be subjective. And pick what, you, what it is that you want to do, you know, for that particular song. It's a great, great question, though. All right. Yeah, I love playing bass, uh, by the way, Mark. Super, super cool. Uh, uh, I... Um, I love it. It's a great instrument. <laughs> okay. Oh, someone had to go bye-bye. There we go. All right. We do not um, we do not tolerate idiots in the room here. So, bye bye sanitarium. Um, okay, so yeah, let's keep going here, friends. Uh, Eric, do you have a bass guitar course? No, I do not. Can I become a metal god in how many years? Home sanitarium. Home sanitarium is now playing nicely. Uh, you can. You can be a metal god in in how many years? It depends on how much you're you're practicing. That's how much. Hallelujah is a waltz, in, indeed. What do you think about the Boss GT1? Uh, I don't know anything about it, my friend. How many years have I been playing? I've been playing for 35, 36 years now. It's been a while. It's been a minute, as my daughter would say. Let's see, I'm jumping over to Facebook here really quickly, my friends, and I'm gonna make sure there's no questions that I need to, to answer there. And if I kick you out of the chat, which is very, very rare, I've only had to do that a couple times, so if you're one of the lucky folks that have been kicked out of the chat, then you are a special person. Um, I don't mean that in a good way, but you can always come back in, but you gotta play nice, okay? It's a family show, even though I cuss. It's a family show. Which guitar cables do I prefer? You know, um, this is a Mogami. I like the Mogami Golds. They're really expensive, but um, I swear I hear a difference. I swear I hear a difference. I love them. And in fact, I need to get more of them because they're just one of my favorites. Yeah, exactly. Yes, 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 yes. Good. We got some good folks in, in the room today. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I tried, I've never tried to play bass. Is it easier to play than a six string? Yeah, it is because you have less strings. They're bigger. Uh, it, it's a different, it's still, we're being subjective here because there are very simple guitar players and very complex bass players. But as a rule, it is. It, it, it is. It's a completely different animal. Bakhtak is saying it is. It's a different animal. But at the same time, if you can play guitar, it's basically the bottom four strings of the guitar tuned down uh, an octave, but the string names are the same, E, A, D, G. And so if your guitar player is playing a C, you play a C note. So it's, you could literally play guitar that day, whatever day you want to play, you could, you could play it. It's, that's the cool thing about it. On a DCG song, what do you think about using C add nine to make changes faster? A lot of people do it. If it sounds good, do it. In fact, I had uh, somebody in a band that um, somebody in a band that I played with. It was called the band was called the Mulligans, and the guy would always play the top. He would always play these top 
these top two fingers like this, like you would in a, a D suspended chord. So his G chord looked like that, or like you would in a G chord, and then his D chord looked like that, and the C chord looked like that. Let me show you. Like literally he just had that the whole time, right there. So a G chord, D chord, C chord, E minor chord. And it kind of created a really cool little droning sound the whole time. 15 to 20 years to become a metal god, that's BS. Uh, EVH had, had it in much less time. Yeah, it really depends on how much you practice. I went, uh, I played a gig the other night, great guitar player playing, and, uh, and I mentioned something to one of the guys. I said, your guitar player's really good. And he said, oh, thanks, that's, I forgot the kid's name, but he's been playing for three years, and he was really good. And I was so, uh, so pleased to see that. And I've had students like that, too, to where... Um, and I know what's going on in your mind. Well, because they were born into blah, 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 blah. No, no, that's true. It's because they busted their butts and they practiced all the time and they were passionate about it. It's the only thing that matters. It's the only thing that matters. I will challenge anybody on this. You show me somebody who is born with the ability to play guitar. I mean, we're all born with the ability to play guitar, but what I'm saying is you show me where they were, where they were playing guitar at three years old, just as well as they were at 23 years old, and I'll change my mind. But until then, I'm going to continue to stand firm that it has everything to do with practice and zero to do with anything else, okay? It may be 1% having to do with anything else, but if you're gonna hang your hat on that 1%, then you got other problems, okay? Stick to practice. It's gonna get you where you wanna get to. I've tried GNL guitars, John. Yeah, and I love them. They're really cool. Uh, yes, I love them. How do you make the transition from strumming to playing riffs? Joe, you do it the day you do it. So stop strumming, play a riff, and you're there. Okay? Literally. Just do it. You're going to have to get more descriptive. You're going to have to drill down further, Joe, if, if, if you have something else that you mean by that. Because literally... You just play the riff, okay? The only way to do something is to try to do it. That's something I was going to mention to you guys. Okay, so like I work with my, my little boy a lot. He's three years old, and it's been a while since I've been a dad. I have a 21-year-old, and I've got a three-year-old, and, um, and I forgot some stuff, right? But there are things that you teach a child knowing darn well that they're just not going to get right away. But guess what? They're never going to get it unless you show them, unless there's 50 times that you show it to them the first time where they don't get it. Okay? I'm still trying to teach my kid how to eat. He's a complete genius, but the kid does not want to feed himself, right? So I'm going to have to show that to him a few hundred more times before he starts doing it. But here's this is the way the brain works. If the brain doesn't see something, it has no impression. It has no, oh, that's what I do. But if it sees something, if it observes something, it goes, oh. And then a second time, it goes, oh. And the third time, it goes, oh. Fourth time, it starts making an impression, okay? And this is exactly how our brains work. So whatever it is that you're trying to do, if you're not trying to do it, if you're not attempting or practicing to do it, well, then you're never going to do it. Because you have to tell your brain, hey, brain, this is what I want to do. And this is how I see people trying it. I'm going to try it, and your brain's going to figure it out. It's impossible to not. This is one amazing thing amongst a billion things that are amazing about us, about beings, about living beings, is that we have the capacity to grow. And the only way we can grow is to observe something that we want to do and then to try it. But you're never going to get there without, without attempting Hey, what's up, man? How do I combine chords with licks between and sing at the same time? Uh, Quam is saying, Quam, you do it one at a time. You don't just try to do it all at once. So I can tell by the way that question was said is this person wants to do all of that and wants to do it right now, wants me to have an answer that will, that will, uh, that will do that. And of course, there's not an answer that will, that will allow him to do that. Nobody has that power to do that. Uh, that would be talking about the magic and going going to the crossroads and selling your soul. So, Quam, what you want to do is you want to, here's the deal, how, you want to combine the chords with licks. So how do you do that? Well, start playing some chords and start playing some licks that you want to play separately. 
then learn to play some chords and sing at the same time, separately. Then combine playing chords and licks and sing at the same time, but none of it will happen. See, we can, we can skip a step, but it will only be a step, a step skipped. It won't be a step that you did, it'll be a step that you skipped, okay? So if you wanna go from one to five, you can do that. But number one, you're not gonna do it effectively, and steps two through four, you won't have done so you won't have them. Does that make sense? I know that sounds logical, but I'm trying to help your psychology here to understand that there is no skipping anything. You just do it, okay? It's going to it's always going to take longer than you think it is. That's okay. You're going to be here for a while, aren't you? I know I am. I'm planning on being here at least to 100. So I got a few years. Um, you know, I can I can kind of take my time in doing this. But taking my time doesn't mean I'm not going to practice a lot. It just means I'm going to be where I'm at today, but I'm going to bust my butt and practice a lot, okay? Is the bass tuned to E, A, D, G usually? Yes, it is. E, A, D, G. Yo. Having trouble with finger picking, isolating the bass rhythm, thumb, and fingers. Can I learn the rhythm with practice or am? Um, I'm going to need that to be refined a little bit, mon mongonious, because I don't know what that means. Uh, can I learn rhythm with practice or am? I don't know what that means. So if you can shine that up a little bit, that'd be cool. But um, but I guarantee you, whatever you're asking is yes, because the brain is incapable of not learning. Whatever it is that you're throwing at it, it will learn it. But best to do it in a, in a way that you can see the forward momentum, which is why I'm always talking about breaking things down and slowing them down, is because if you don't see the momentum, if you, don't, if you go to the gym, okay, and you work out really, really hard. And the next day, you're so sore that you can't even get out of bed. And then you walk up to the, the mirror the next day. And you're like, dude, this pain is so worth it. I'm going to be so swall. I'm going to be so big. And you look in the mirror and nothing changed. Even though you busted your butt that day. Well, it's because nothing's going to change in one day. It's going to take a few weeks or a few months, okay? So you got to be committed to it. So typically, things we get the progress slower than what we want, but it's impossible for our bodies not our bodies and our minds not to get where we want to get them if you are saying, this is what I want to do, mind. This is what I want to do, body. You got to do that first, you know? Do you get any injuries by playing for a long time? No. The only injury that you're going to get, <laughs> the, only, the only injury is that you're going to, no, I was going to say something that was not meant for the audience there, but uh, not meant for family audience. Yeah, you're not going to get injured. You're going to have um, a lot of fun is what you're going to have. You're not going to get injured. Uh, can I recommend a good acoustic? Uh, yeah, I tell you what, check out yourguitarsage.com slash kit or kit.com slash yourguitarsage. I've got a link for you where you guys can check out some of my recommendations. Uh, there's some great guitars out there that are, that are affordable. Um, Orange Wood is one of my favorite right now. Absolutely fantastic guitar. So you can check that out, kit.com slash yourguitarsage. You've got the link right there on the screen for you. Eric, uh, your guitar sounds great. Could you tell us what it is and how you chose it? David, yes. David, I'm giving this away on Saturday. I could be giving it to you, David. This is uh, an American Fender Telecaster made in Corona, California. It's a fairly new one. I forgot the, the year, but uh, but it's brand spanking new. It's going to come with the case and everything else. And I purchased this from Groon Guitar in Nashville. If you know that, it's for like literally the most famous music store, or at least guitar music store in the history of ever. And luckily, it's just right down, not right down the street. It's about 20 minutes away from me. But uh, I buy guitars there monthly. I bought two this month from them. This is one of them. And, uh, and so, but a lot of the stuff that you're hearing there, David, like you're hearing the nice... Uh, tremolo right there. But this guitar does sound exceptional. It, it really is a great sounding guitar and it plays amazingly. Thank you so much, David.
Oh. Oh, so nice. Thank you, John. My kid is learning guitar from this guy. Uh, I've never seen such an in-depth and practical way for a kid to learn guitar, top notch. Oh, that is the sweetest, John, thank you. Sometimes I get up here and I say my, my stuff and I wonder if I'm just talking to myself because um, sometimes I feel like I'm being an ass and I'm not meaning to. I really, truly am trying to get you to the next level and sometimes that takes tough love, right? To say, hey, this is not true. I, I'm sorry if it hurts your feelings, but it's just not true, right? So I'm sorry. Hey, Eric, uh, you're saying if I practice more, I'll get better. One sarcastic guy to another. Yes, indeed, Jeff. And I know I say that a lot, okay? I know I say it a lot, friends, but if you truly embrace this, you will realize that all the power is within you. You literally, you literally could be the next Jimi Hendrix, okay? In fact, in a world of no guitar solos uh, right now, someone needs to be a new Jimi Hendrix, right? There needs to be somebody out there. So there's so many great guitar players, but there's the only thing that's stopping you from being the one that everybody's talking about is just time on the instrument. That's great news. It's great and it's not great, right? Because it would be so cool if I had a pill or a, a course that one could take that would instantly get them there. Well, the course definitely is helpful, right? It's just like if you want to build a house, um, hammer's pretty good. Even if you are an architect and you know everything about engineering, if you don't have a hammer, you're gonna have to drill, you're gonna have to get nails into that wood with like a rock or possibly your fist or your head or something. It's not gonna be fun. So a hammer is pretty useful. Uh, a great course is very useful. A, t a teacher is, is very useful. But it's, it takes many things, right? And more than anything, it takes practice, but you can't have one without the other. You can't build a house without the knowledge, but you'll also have to have the hammer too, right? Yes, somebody's practicing for a long not a long time. It still does not affect. No, back in the day uh, when I was a teenager, I would practice, there were times where I practiced 12, 16 hours a day, literally from the time that I woke up to the time that I went to bed, just played all day long, um, grudgingly had to eat something or had to take out the garbage or something. Uh, but that's that was when I really just was digging in all the time. And you will get magically phenomenal doing that. I'm new to social media. I just joined YouTube last week. How do you share these videos if you don't have social media accounts? You can't or contacts. Can we share on our non-social media email accounts? eGuitar, you can, but we're not going to be able to track it. We're not going to be able to see that, right? Because it's your personal email. So uh, you'd have to have some social media accounts. If you don't have that, I get it. Um, I totally get that. You know what I mean? But then you don't get the advantage of that either. Eric, what's the name of your band? I'm coming to Nashville in December and would love to check you guys out if you're going to do a gig. Uh, thanks for all the great advice. Michael saying, Michael, I currently don't have a band. Now, I played this Sunday night with a band called A-Way. Uh, it's actually my daughter's band. Uh, but I do, And I've got a project called Kirby and the Roaches. We don't play out. Um, in fact, we've never played out. It's just a project within the cans, within the... Within the, the uh, headphones that we just do in the studio. It's me and my wife. Um, and really, I do all the instrumentation, all the production and stuff like that. And we both write the songs and sing. Uh, but we don't play out. We never have. But we, we might should sometime. We're just so busy with uh, the rest of our lives. So I, I'm not in a band right now. But I want to be desperately. But it's finding the right band where everybody's dedicated. Believe it or not, in Nashville, that's not super duper easy to find. Everybody either wants to play for money, which is great, or they have day jobs and they're not as good as the guys that want money. The guys and gals that want money, right? Yes. You're shaking your head yes. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is 2014 model or not, friends. Yeah, mark your calendars. This Saturday, I'm giving this thing away at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Billy already signed up. Nice Billy. Oh, thank you, Beth. I love the Unstoppable Guitar System. I try to watch at least one video a day. I wanted to tell you that it is very thorough. I have learned so much that my teacher has not covered over the last 11 months. Thanks. Oh, that makes me feel happy. Thank you so much, Beth. So kind of you. Thank you for letting other folks know too.
Ah, nice. Bob Weir. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Appears to know more chord inversions and variations than anybody. He spends so much time on still learning and practicing. It's true. There's so much to learn. It's an infinite amount of stuff to learn, which makes it so fun because you can always, it's the gift that keeps on giving back. There is no stopping. If you, look, Ed, guitar is so absolutely fulfilling too. I've been doing this since I was 14 years old. And when I know, if, when I hear of people who don't have music in their lives, at least be listening to music, but even like to listen to music and not be able to play it, it just, like the thought of that is like hell to me. Like that I can't pick something up and play it. To just be able to hear it and not be able to duplicate it, like it's so cool to be able to do that. It's so fulfilling. Uh, so if, you, if, if you're new to guitar and you want to dig in, friends, I got lots of free stuff for you. So, but, but by all means, do it because it's so fulfilling. Vivek is saying, uh, is Fender American Pro Series guitar HSS good for playing solos? Indeed, yeah, it's a fantastic guitar. One of the best. HSS uh, has a humbucker and two singles, and that's great. So this has two singles, but the humbucker is great for playing that nice hard rock stuff, right? Active versus passive pickups, which do you like and why? Uh, Joe, I love active, I mean, I love passive pickups. I've only played passive pickups. I've had guitars with active pickups in it before. Um, I've got one guitar that has active pickups in it. But uh, for me, I don't see the advantage. Uh, to me, I feel like it's a, it, there's a lot of hype behind it. EMG pickups look fantastic. I'm sorry, EMG, I don't mean to pick on you. Um, I probably should have some guitars with some EMG pickups. I've had them before, and I didn't, they didn't impress me any more than anything else. So really, uh, again, it's very subjective because you can have an act, listen, active pickup just means it has battery in it and it's got a little preamp in it. So it takes a signal and it boosts it from the actual pickup. Whereas passive pickups are, are literally just works on the vibration of the string through electricity and it's, and it's real basic. Uh, but some people think that well, having that active bit in there is going to make it better Use your ear, Joe. Bottom line, use your ear. If your ear hears that it's better, then it may be better for you. But if it doesn't, then go with your ear because ultimately that's what it's about anyhow. No one, no one's going to buy your album because you're using passive or active pickups. They will buy your album though if you have great tone. Does that make sense? Um, does the index finger and thumb work together to form the bar chords, Della saying? Yes, Della, and I think what you mean by that is do they work together like a clamp, right? So like when you're playing a bar chord, let me show you this. When you're playing a bar chord, you gotta have your thumb on the back of the neck and most often that, that first finger is gonna be right behind the thumb, why? Let's think about this from a basic physics point for a minute. If I'm over here, how much harder do I have to press down on both fingers to get the same pressure, but if I do this, well, now I've got all sorts of pressure. I don't have to press as hard. So if it's here or if it's here, now we have to press harder. So that's a technique that's great for understanding your bar chords. Have that thumb right behind that first finger. It's going to help a ton, okay? Now, I could bring my thumb over here a little bit more, but I mean, that's pretty comfortable for me right there. If I start doing this or my way out here, I'm going to have to press harder. And it doesn't mean that I'm not going to do that. But for extended periods of time, it's not going to help you as much as, as something else, you know? All right, good. You guys have some great questions today. Uh, Jeff's World, if that is an American telly, the serial number should start with USXX and XSX. X being the mm, the year made. All right, let's see if that's true because here's the deal. I found that sometimes it's true and sometimes it's not. Okay, so you probably know what you're talking about. So this is a third. This says US one three one. Okay, so it's so it's probably a 2013 then. If the, if what you're saying is correct, um, those that know how to decipher serial numbers and usually Fender is better than Gibson. Gibson's all over the place, so you can look at a serial number and be like, I don't know and then go see a pro and they're like, I don't know, let's pull the pickups out and look. Uh, Gibson has crazy serial numbers stuff, but Fender may be, um, may be better than that. Thank you, Uncle Jeff, uh, for letting me know that. 
isn't this so cool, man? We're in this community, and it's like we can all learn from each other. Uh, if every guitar player that I sit down with, just about every guitar player, unless they're brand new, but even sometimes brand new guitar player, I will learn something from them in their psychology. Maybe it's the way that I should be teaching. Maybe they say something and I go, hmm, they're having a problem with that? I didn't know that people have a problem with that. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to learn so I can teach you better. Okay, so like every guitar player I sit in front of, I try to learn something from them. Or every person I sit in front of, I try to learn something from them. Number one, it's going to make you more engaging. And two, you're going to learn stuff instead of just sitting there, you talking all the time. You learn stuff. You get information. So, um... I think that's so cool. Thank you, Jeff, for adding that. And I have so many cool people in the program, like y'all, uh, that it makes it so it makes it so fun because we can literally sharp, iron sharpen iron, right? You've heard of that before. Okay. Or am I doomed to be too white? <laughs> Mongonius is saying. Uh, you'll have to let me know what style of music you're trying to play, my friend. <laughs> but no, I don't think it matters whether you're white, black, yellow, or, or red. It, um, it matters if you're passionate or not, you know. I've seen some white guys play some wicked cool blues, and I've seen some black guys play some wicked cool pop and heavy metal and otherwise. Uh, music it doesn't care about race or age or gender or anything like that it will it sits and waits for those that want to that want to join in oops telecaster is missing an ashtray um yeah you know so like my this is my 67 and it's got the ashtray there right so what we mean by that is um this has like a little edge and they call that the ashtray so it's like literally looks like an ashtray whereas this one doesn't have it doesn't have it. Why? I don't know why. What exactly are SRV uh, Texas Blues pickups? Um, so Stevie Ray Vaughan, I believe, had a signature pickup that he had made. But Tex-Mex pickups are the types of pickups that Stevie Ray Vaughan used. And they're just a style of pickups uh, that sound really great with blues. And they're, they're wound a certain way. So there you go. Uh, Richard's saying, what's a good source? You're going to have to get more specific with that, buddy. For what? Let me know what. Okay. Great. All right. Since my trackpad just went out on me, I need to put new batteries in it. It just died on me. Um, that's it for questions. Plus, we're at an hour and a half anyhow, my friends. So... Uh, I'd love to help you, friends, how to play guitar and sing at the same time. I have a video for that on YouTube. You can always search Your Guitar Stage Singing and Playing. I have a whole series for that inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System. Okay, uh, If we have an offer for that, I'm not sure. But nonetheless, um, we do have... If you know what the dollar special is, yourguitarstage.com slash one, you could go check that out, but literally we're doing away with that. In fact, I probably shouldn't even have said that. It's going away. So if you want to take advantage of it, today's the day to do it because it's literally, we're making it go bye-bye. Uh, we're doing some other stuff. So with that being said, I have free videos for you. I've paid videos. Uh, the paid stuff is obviously the more premium content where I really dig down deep and 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 get you involved in the whole nine yards. Uh, check out the Unstoppable Guitar System. You'll find the link for that inside the PDF. It's at the top, the free version. Uh, the first 30-something videos, they're not free because they're crap, my friends. They're free because I really try, I'm trying to help as many people as possible. And a lot of the questions that you guys ask can be answered inside of that series. So um, I can only reach so many people, even with these broadcasts, a few thousand at a time, and there's way more people watching and that need help. So that's why I provided that course for free for you. So check that out, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Check that out. Take advantage of it, my friends, because I specifically made it for you to help get you to the next level. Okay, that's number one. Number two, share this video today because if doing so, what we do is we check out someone, we, we always uh, award somebody a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System. It's a $400 course. We give that away all the time. 
In fact, we'll be giving away 14 or 15 of those, one of the two, uh, this Saturday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, along with this beautiful Fender Telecaster guitar. So over $6,000 worth of goodies will be given away this Saturday, the 3rd, at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. We're going to be doing a broadcast. You don't have to stick around that long. I'll be teaching the, uh, the, the curriculum, which will be how to build a solid foundation in any genre of guitar, whether you are a day one newbie or a seasoned veteran. Uh, the link's right there. Make sure you take advantage of this, yourguitarstage.com slash live. Uh, you do have to register for it. It's literally like your first name and email. And then we're, we're going to send you a PDF. We're going to send you bonus videos. You'll be registered to win for, that's literally how it works. It's all you do, first name, email, and then we can get in touch with you for the, for the winnings. So many ways to win. Uh, we're going to be doing stuff on Twitter, the whole nine yards. After we give that stuff away, at about the 10 a.m. Central Standard Time mark, or CDT time, then what we're going to do is I'm going to teach for another, or I'm going to answer questions for another three hours. At the 11 a.m. mark this Saturday, we're going to have a special guest. His name is Lance Allen. He's a remarkable finger-picking, finger-style guitarist. Remarkable. Okay, he'll run circles around me. Great guitar player, you gotta watch him. He's big on Spotify, a uh, good friend of mine, and he's going to be here uh, playing two songs for you. He's gonna do that at 11 a.m. So we're gonna try to start getting some more talent in here because Nashville is the number one place for guitar players in the world, did you know that? The best guitar players in the world live here. So um, that, that's gonna happen, and then I'm gonna be answering your questions until Nine, let's see, nine to one p.m. We're gonna, I'm gonna be hanging out with you for four hours. So do not forget to join us for that. You shared it. You did the live thing. You did the free course. That's it, my friends. Okay, love you so much. You guys played full out today. Thank you so much for the questions today. I love you guys. If you haven't already, subscribe, like, share, do all that good stuff. Uh, and and my gift to you is me on a T Rex playing a song. Okay, that's my gift to you. Um, that's coming up next. All right, I love you guys. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in another video coming up soon. All right? See ya.